You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible Jesus and the Centurion's Lad The Huffington Post had an article recently which provoked a flurry of posts and comment on the biblical blogs. The article basically claimed that the Pice, the servant or lad, in the story of the centurion's servant in Matthew and Luke was the centurion's homosexual lover setting aside all of the discussion over whether either of those terms might have been appropriate in the ancient context and the probability that neither was it was a comment by Gavin at Odegosh that got me interested a throwaway line I'm not sure the story actually has much value in terms of current debates on homosexuality he wrote is that right? You know how the story goes. In Matthew 8, 5 to 13, and Luke 7, 1 to 10, Jesus is entering Capernaum, and a Roman centurion asks him to heal his servant, his pice. As Jesus is getting ready to go, the centurion says there's no need for Jesus to actually come because he understands authority. Jesus speaks, and the servant is healed. This does raise the question of whether the centurion's pice was his homosexual partner. Probably not. Pice means lad, a teen or a child, or a servant. It's a bit like the old-fashioned colonial term boy, which referred to a man who worked in the house, or the French garçon, which means both a boy and a waiter. But it is true that a lad who served a centurion was quite likely to have been used sexually given what went on in Greco-Roman culture so translating Pais as homosexual lover is plain wrong translating it as lad is probably right so it raises for me the question of which is and which would have been the more shocking Jesus heals the centurion's lad or Jesus heals the centurion's lad nudge nudge i.e. is it the fact that the centurion is a hated Roman or is it the possibility that the centurion has a homosexual partnership with this servant which is the more shocking now it's quite clear that today the really shocking possibility is that Jesus healed a homosexual sex slave that's what gets people's goats going it's also quite clear to me that back in Jesus time the thing that really got people excited was that this was a Roman soldier it's not clear in Matthew, Matthew just seems to take the whole story in his stride but listen to the story in Luke after Jesus had finished all his sayings and the hearing of the people he entered Capernaum a centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death when he heard about Jesus he sent some Jewish elders to him asking him to come and heal his slave when they came to Jesus they appealed to him earnestly saying he is worthy of having you do this for him for he loves our people and it is he who built our synagogue for us then Jesus went with them but when he was not far from the house the centurion sent friends to say to him Lord do not trouble yourself and so on Luke is obviously somewhat embarrassed at Jesus healing a centurion's servant and make sure to mention that several Jewish elders had come to Jesus asking him to heal the boy thus taming a dangerous story nowadays we don't see it as dangerous at all that Jesus should heal a centurion's lad but if the story were Jesus healing the centurion's lad then we'd have a different take on it so for me the question that the story raises on this issue is twofold the first is who would Jesus shock and the second is for us who read the Gospels would it be shocking if Jesus healed a centurion's lad? I don't think so. As one of the commentators on Otagosh pointed out, Jesus regularly healed sinners. 
and as most of us need to remember when we think about this issue all of us are sinners <laughs>